All right, so I am trying to get myself a mending book. Yeah, uh, I looked around the different options to do it. There's the villager trading that we all know about. You can potentially find it in Bastion loot, I guess, but I don't really have an easy way to get around the nether to try and find a Bastion, so I'm not sure I want to do that. So here we are fishing. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I went ahead and I made myself a Luck of the Sea 2 with Unbreaking 3 fishing rod. I just threw it into the enchantment table, saw Luck of the Sea 2. I was like, score, let's go. Uh, it's not Luck of the Sea 3, but you know, it's better than not having Luck of the Sea at all to get those treasure drops. So apparently fishing for loot has changed a little bit. Like there's specific requirements in order for you to actually get treasure from fishing. I remember hearing about this before, but this is the first time I've had to encounter it. Basically the way it works is wherever your bobber is, there has to be like two sources of water on all sides of it. There has to be two sources of water below it and then uh, air all above it in that same area. So it's like a five by five by two area that has to be water, and then that same area has to be air above it. Anyway, so I took one of these lakes here in our little area, in our little base area, and I dug out the bottom. It was all dirt before, but I got rid of the floor. I filled it in full of water, so it's all nice down there. Uh, I had tried this before doing that and I'd only received fish, but after changing that up, my very first cast, I got a saddle, so I know it's working. Um, but I'm not sure, like, if I place a bobber here, is that one source block? Is that considered two? Like, it seems very specific, like you gotta aim it in the right spot so you have plenty of water around it, and then if you don't get it any loot, you, <laughs> you gotta wonder to yourself, well, was it in the right spot? Did I mess that up? I don't know. Um, I've been getting a lot of fish. I only got the one treasure loot so far. Uh, I'm gonna try this out for a little bit. Hopefully we will get ourselves a mending book so I can throw that onto our fortune three pickaxe down here. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna be fishing for a bit. See you guys after I'm done. All right, so an update. Uh, I've been using this fishing rod for a while. We got unbreaking three on it, but I've gone down 12 durability out of the 64 in total. You can see I got a bunch of fish here. I've Got some nice bows, power four and breaking three. That's way better than the one that I'm currently using. Um, yeah, and we got the saddle earlier, but I just got this fishing rod. I just fished this. Lure three, I'm breaking three, luck of the sea three, and mending. So that means this fishing rod, I believe, will never break because you get XP every time you fish something, right? So this is essentially the best fishing rod that you can get. That's pretty awesome. Okay, so I've been at this fishing thing for far longer than I probably should have. I did get a couple of enchanted books. However, I did not get any mending. We got a unbreaking and efficiency and we got protection three, fire aspect two, Frostwalker two. So I got my choice on what I want to put that on. Um, yeah, it's unfortunate. I was kind of expecting to get mending a little bit easier than that, but all of that fishing, you can see all the different stuff in my inventory here, or I guess in this chest, that I have fished up, and yeah, only those two books, no mending. Oh well. Um, so I did end up getting a Unbreaking 3 Flame Power 4 Bow, which is really good, and then I got another one that's got Power 4 and Infinity on it, so if we combine these two and get a Power 5 Infinity Unbreaking Flame uh, bow, which is really, really good, right? Uh, the only thing I'd have to do beyond that is repair it one more time with like a completely brand new bow to get the durability all the way up, and then we're good to go on a new bow. So yeah, I mean, it all works out in the end. I was <laughs> really just hoping that we could bypass doing the villager thing for mending, but it doesn't look like we're gonna be able to, so I think we're gonna have to go find ourselves a village. So over here at the Skelly Grinder the other day, I came back and I saw that there was an enchantment table set up here. I didn't put it here. Nope. Uh, this magically appeared on its own. I did let XB use my Skeleton Grinder, though, and this appeared and then there are some signs here. It says, I saw your sign. It opened up my eyes. I am happy now living near you. Oh, oh, oh. I don't know. Thanks for letting me use... Do Skelly Farm XP. <laughs> You're welcome, dude. Uh, so yeah, we now have a full enchantment table and or a full enchanting setup, including the enchantment table. Thanks, XP. That's really awesome. 
So since last episode, I did go to the end on a live stream, and I ended up getting a couple of shulker boxes. I didn't go crazy, but I did grab a couple of those. All right, enough stuff to make two of those. Uh, we did get some diamond armor, which is pretty awesome. And I also got an elytra, which is really cool. So I would really like the ability to get mending uh, so we can put down our elytra and be able to fly around and not worry about it breaking and <laughs> having to worry about phantoms and all that stuff. Uh, I also added in a bubble column here so we can get up and down easier without having to use a ladder which is really nice. Looks like it's nighttime outside, so I'm gonna have to sleep, but yeah, so we got this installed. Uh, I'm not really happy with the way it turned out because this is kind of like blocking the middle of the road here. Uh, so this will be moved at some point, but that was just kind of like a quick thing. All right, so our new bow is made, the Pew Pew. Let's see what happens, and ooh, is that a one-shot? Am I one-shotting things now? Oh, that's awesome. So, our Pew Pew Unbreaking 3 Flame Power 5 Infinity. It is the most awesome bow ever. Yeah, this also means that I can use this offhand and just shoot my cows because it sets them on fire. I'm holding a looting sword in my main hand, which gives me the looting effect. So, I am getting cooked food and a lot of it, looting 3 uh, cooked food. Yeah, so I don't have to worry about going in here and individually killing each and every cow by jump attacking them. Well, we don't have mending and I'm still looking for mending, so my next task is to try and find ourselves a village. Uh, I think I know where there is a village, and we're gonna go there. I went ahead and I made my nether portal in the ceiling, and we are now sharing a tunnel here with XB since he lives pretty close to where our base is. So yeah, that's his portal. That was mine. We share this tunnel here. Um, yeah, so I want to go to a snowy village. I want to get myself some snowy villagers. I've never had those before, and I think those would make a good addition to our base should we bring them back. But regardless, I'm going to head out that way. Uh, it's about 600 blocks-ish, I think. Anyway, I got some digging I'm going to have to do, so I'm going to go ahead and bring you guys back in when we get to where we're going. All right, well, I tunneled all the way to where the village was supposed to be, placed my portal in the nether, and here we are. So, yes, we are in a tundra, which is awesome. Some kitty cats around, got some villagers. So we are looking for farmer villagers that will give us emerald trade for wheat. So that one's got the potato. This one has a wheat trade. Awesome. So it is expensive, 20 wheat per one emerald. But we're not really set up to do a whole bunch of the villager zombification and curing things to get that cheaper right now. Uh, so now that we know there is a wheat villager, which is great, what I would like to find now is another villager that we can turn into a librarian. Okay, uh, there's a lot of cats here. What the heck? There's one, two, three, four, and then there was also like a calico one, I think, that we saw going over this way. Anyway, that's, that's a lot of cats. There's at least five cats that I've seen here. Is that normal? I thought that these things were supposed to spawn with like a maximum of two. I don't know. Anyway, uh, so do we have any more villagers in here? Or do we just have like the two adults and the one baby villager? Because that's all I'm seeing right now. I heard one. Is it just the baby that's in here? Yeah, okay. So we got the baby in here. Uh, we do have these two other houses. Maybe there's another villager here. Maybe we're just going to have to use one of these three. Uh, what's in the chest? Iron helmet, some bread. Okay, no great loot. And this one, the door is open. I assume there was a villager over here, but don't see one. Okay, so I think this village only has three villagers and like a hundred cats. Great. Uh, so the one villager that we had over here that did not have the correct trade was a tater trade, right? You are going to become our librarian. Uh, so in my shulker box, I brought a lectern. We need to get this villager into like a hole or something. Uh, so this villager will only be able to interact with one different workstation. I see there's another villager. Okay, so we do have three adults at least. Um, can I move this villager like down here or something? I'd like to get him to a spot. <laughs> there we go. Where the villager can't escape anymore. And he no longer can... Pathfind to like his workstation. So we'll place that here. Okay, so this villager is now trapped. 
Great. So... Aha. Uh -huh. So if I put a lectern, like, I don't know, over here, something where the villager can a interact with it, but no other villager can pathfind... Yep, there we go. Uh, so I just need to go ahead and do this until we get ourselves a mending book. <laughs> right there. That was easy. Second, second attempt. Okay, well, now that we know it's 26 emerald... Oh, you know what? I didn't bring any books. Dang. Well, now that we know it's 26 emeralds, I can start trading and try and get a whole bunch of emeralds to the other village, or get a whole bunch of emeralds from the other villager. So as it turns out, I did not have enough wheat to get enough emeralds to buy that mending book. Whoop, I got some XP. <laughs> uh, so I went back to the base and I doubled up the amount of wheat that I was growing and I AFK'd and I harvested and I AFK'd and I harvested. And then I came back and I exchanged my wheat to our guy over here and I ended up with like, I don't know, 32 emeralds or something along those lines. But as I found out, our librarian here that we had set up with the mending that we had already collected or that we had already discovered, he was reset. He had something else, different trade. So I had to uh, replace down the lectern many, many, many times to get ourselves another mending. I don't remember what the previous one was. Was it 16? I don't know. Anyway, it's 18 now. Um, but yeah, I ended up getting two mending books, so we are really good. So I can put mending here on our diamond pickaxe, uh, that's got the fortune on it. So that should repair itself as I mine by harvesting ores and whatnot. And then the other mending, this is going to go on to our elytra. Uh, I do need to get myself an unbreaking three book, but I think I'm just going to use the enchantment table and our skeleton grinder. Whoop, that villager just went into... <laughs> The nether. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go ahead and use our skeleton grinder to do that. Do we have more villagers here than we had before? I feel like we only had three villagers before, but now we have at least four of them. Hm, I don't know. Anyway, uh, I'm going to try and get myself on breaking three. Yeah, waiting on all of these crops to grow definitely takes a while. So it's one of those things, like I said, I doubled the amount of crops that I had and I just AFK'd for like an hour or two and I came back and then harvested them all so we could get enough wheat to trade for those emeralds. But I think it was all worth it. We now have an elytra with unbreaking three and mending on it. I did create some rockets when I got the elytra on live stream so I could fly back a little bit easier. Uh, and we only have Feather Falling 2 at the moment, so I gotta be a little careful that I don't hit the ground too hard. But yeah, we are now able to just kind of take in all the scenery around us, which is fantastic. It's a lot of dark oak at the moment. <laughs> uh, not a whole lot to look at, but this makes getting around the server so much easier. When I go down to the skeleton farm, I can fly through our tunnels. Yeah, all sorts of stuff is going to be that much easier now that we have access to the Elytra. Uh, so I was just talking to XB, and he says he has a business proposition for us. I think we better go over to XB's base and see what's going on. Are you ready for this? Uh, I don't know that you're ready for this. I don't know that I'm ready for this either. Should I be ready for this? I mean, you should be ready oh, for this. Look at you fancy with all your diamond armor. Wow. I got all the diamond, man. Bling, Look bling. You, what's that? Is some elytra going on? What? 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 Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> if you got a spare, I'll buy it. <laughs> I don't. I, I'll i probably go to the end and try and find one for you, but I don't have one yet. Ooh, what is this? Uh-huh. Ooh, I, I just finished building it. I got a moss block. It's pretty, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's very mossy. So if you if you look in here, right? Uh huh. I just finished building oh. this like 15 minutes ago. Oh wow, that is a lot of stuff. Right. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But if you, if you come down here. Oh oh okay. okay down here down here. Yeah, come in this little alcove here, and uh. then look in that that dispenser back there. Oh. Um, I I may need a little bit of uh, something that goes in there. I see. Yes. Uh, that's something I might be able to help you out with. That's, that's what I was thinking. So if, you know, if you're, if you're wanting to work out some kind of deal, right? Zine is how we are, you know, we're neighbors. Right, right. We work together and... We both we prosper. Un unlimited access whenever you want to the, the, the goods. Right? Okay. As long as... As long as in return, there's unlimited access to bones and bone meal. I think we can definitely strike this deal. That sounds great. And then, on top of that. On, right, wait, there's more? 
Oh, wait. Oh, wait. There's more. <laughs> <laughs> we could sell this. Oh. Because it's new. People want it. That's true. Right? I want it. I don't have right. any of this yet. Right. And so we could sell it and do a profit sharing. Right? All right. All right. I like I like where you're going with it. It's very fancy. So this is this is a very intricate contraption of my own design. It definitely looks very intricate. Well, and a little contraption-y oh. too. It's probably a little more intricate than it needs to be, but <laughs> that's fine. It's fine. I designed it. It works. It does what it needs to do. And that's all that matters. Right. Um, there is a tiny bit of loss every once in a while. Yeah, you just see, I think one just popped out. Uh huh. Um, one pops out from down here, but that's what it's like one every, I don't know, five minutes or something, which oh. look in there is oh. literally nothing. Yeah, that, that <laughs> won't matter. <laughs> yeah, this is really awesome, dude. I like it. Oh, did did you see my other shop? By, uh, by, by the by. Oh, I have not seen your other I shop, know. actually. Yeah. I've got a shop already in place, man. I'm I'm making ducats. Oh, it's nighttime. Oh, super scary. It's pretty lit up. It's pretty safe. <laughs> Dude, this base is lit up. It's very lit. All right, so <laughs> come on up in here. Wait, do I have a haste beacon effect? Mm -hmm. Do you already have a beacon? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> See? Uh oh yeah, look at this. One diamond per 16 glow ink or three diamond per stack of glow ink. Nice. Mm -hmm, making money. That <laughs> it looks like you've actually made some pretty good profits off this already, which is awesome. You. Oh. You actually have some axolotls down here just chilling. I, I've got a lot of axolotls. Are you trying to collect all the different colors? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, okay. This is just like a, you know. It's for looks. Right, right, right. Yeah. But as we're standing here, uh -huh. I'm making more of that. What? <laughs> because of, yeah, I've, I've got a glow ink farm. I haven't seen your glow ink farm either. Oh, well, come on then. Okay. <laughs> come see all the well, things. So that business deal sounds really good with XB. Our end of the deal would be that we'd have to provide bones for bone meal for him. Uh, so I've been over here working on the skeleton grinder area, just kind of like making this place look nicer. I've dug out directly below the spawner, so like this room should be the same exact size as the uh, internals of our spawner up above, which is quite a few blocks above this block here. That's where our ladder is. In fact, I just kind of covered it up. I might dig out the ceiling. I really don't know what I'm going to do with this just yet. I mean, I don't really need to like look up there for any particular reason, so we might just completely remove this. Uh, but yeah, I started messing around with the deep slate a little bit, so some polished deep slate is what I've been using for like the corner pieces, and I thought that we would like continue this along the edge on the ceiling here, and just kind of see how this goes, something along those lines, and then maybe like have that meet up into the center. So we do something along these lines, like this, and then this would go all the way across, so we kind of like divide the roof into quarters, something along these lines. I think this will look kind of cool. And I don't think we should be uh, messing with any of the redstone or anything up above. So if we have this here, like a so, get rid of this block, and that can go there. And yeah, this would be the center, like so. I was thinking we could do something like this. I think that's going to look kind of cool. And then like in the little 3x3 three three area here, we can take this and probably use some kind of a slab, I would imagine would be cool. Uh, maybe even have a light source there and then we can get the torches off the ground Although I'm not sure if a light source here would be enough to completely light this all up But these are just kind of things that I've been thinking about a little bit Um, so if we're gonna do some kind of a slab, let's put some cobble Deep slate into the grind or stone cutter not grindstone. Uh, what else do we have? We have the polished deep slate slabs. We have the deep slate tile slabs or we have the cobbled deep slate slabs. So we're using the cobbled deep slate along the walls. Then we have the polish here. So maybe we should do the cobbled up here as well. Just a slab version of those. Let's grab just a few of these. Just kind of see how this looks. I don't know if we're going to keep this or not. But I kind of want to do this to give the ceiling a little bit of depth. So it's not just completely flat like the walls are. Uh, so we'll add a few more over here. Maybe uh, let's do this. Alright, so we'll be able to see what half the ceiling looks like 
with that. Is that going to be good? I think that looks good, right? I think so. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and continue that on over here. Well, all right, here we go. The entire room should now be completed. So the ceiling has fully been done like we were seeing before. And I decided to change up the walls. Yeah, instead of having just the cobbled deep slate, I did cobbled deep slate walls. So now we have a little bit of some depth along the walls as well. So these are instead about half a block or quarter of a block or third or whatever that is. Uh, so yeah, it's not a completely flat wall anymore. And I think it adds just a little bit to the room. Uh, so yeah, I've added like everywhere there is the cobble deep slate along the walls. I have turned those into cobble deep slate walls and I've never done these before where they're completely flat like this. Apparently you have to remove the blocks behind. So there has to be an air gap behind it. Otherwise these blocks try to attach to the blocks behind it and then they kind of stick out a little bit like this and it just doesn't look flat anymore. It just isn't very good. So yeah, you definitely have to remove the blocks behind. So I've added some light sources back there to make sure that uh, nothing will spawn. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with the way this room has turned out. Uh, I still feel like there's probably something more that we can do here with this enchantment table. Maybe like uh, lower it down one more block and put slabs over top of it or something along those lines. It feels like it sticks out a little too much in this room. Uh, since everything is kind of like a really charcoal looking color and then this is a pretty bright wood looking color. So yeah, we might uh, revisit this a little bit later. I was also thinking like instead of using these torches, which actually match the uh, wood, uh, instead of using these torches, we could put something like candles here. Maybe black candles or red candles, something that goes along with the colors in here. We could do something like that, even maybe like a blue candle. I don't know. But yeah, that was something that I was just kind of thinking about. But yeah. Uh, I think this room is now pretty much done as far as the hallway goes it needs a little bit more work and I still got to figure out this light switch uh, where I want to put this in this room. I might stick it on one of these blocks in here so we have easy access to that. So, yep, just other things for the future. But for now, I think we're good to go. Well, I still need to get myself a nice diamond shovel and I haven't done anything about that yet. We do have 31 levels I saw, so let's see what we can get as far as enchantments on this shovel. What do we got here? Efficiency four, that's actually not bad to see. Okay, uh, I'll just go ahead and do that and hey, I mean, fortune three is actually not that great on a shovel. That means we will get flint every single time and I don't really think there's any other use for a shovel like that. I'd rather have had silk touch but it is what it is. Uh, let's see if we were to do a book real quick. Would we get protection for, you know what? That's not bad to have. I just need to get myself a level and just a, a little bit there <laughs> in order to get it. So I'll probably grab that protection for, put it onto a book. That way we can put it onto armor later. But anyway, that is it for this episode, guys. Yes, we got ourselves our elytra. We did a bunch of enchanting. We set up uh, a little bit of a thing there with XB. He needs bone meal. I would like some of his mossy blocks. We're going to be selling these for a profit. It's all going to be good. But anyway, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on this episode if you liked it. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.